So you find yourself wondering, why aren't my shrimp producing any babies? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons your shrimp may not be producing any babies and let you know what you can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm a fish and shrimp breeder based in the UK. So reason number one, it's because your shrimp are in fact all female. And this happens more often than you might think. When it comes to red cherry shrimp, it typically is the females that boast most of the colour. To the uninitiated, it's all about the colour. If you go to the store and buy yourself the five most colourful shrimp in the tank, there's a good chance you'll walk away with all females. Now, needless to say, to produce babies, you need at least one male in that group. Now, when it comes to sex in red cherry shrimp, it's not just about the colour. You do get brightly coloured males. You do get poorly coloured females. There are a number of different signs we need to look out for. In fact, I'll link up here to a video that tells you how you can go about sexing your red cherry shrimp. But if you've got a tank full of really bright coloured shrimp and you're not getting any babies at all, the first thing I would suggest is check that you actually have at least one male. Now, reason number two you're not getting any baby shrimp is because you have predator fish in there. Now, I know what you're thinking. Predator fish, they're Oscars, they're, they're piranhas, they're big fish, right? To be fair, to a baby shrimp, a neon tetra is a predator. In this tank here, I have a healthy colony of red cherry shrimp but it doesn't grow particularly quickly because I have a healthy colony of guppies. And to a baby shrimp, the guppy is the predator. An adult guppy can easily come along and snipe a baby shrimp. So if you're hoping your red cherry shrimp are going to breed and you keep them with pretty much any fish at all, with the possible exception of an otter sinkless, if you keep them with any fish at all, there's a good chance you're not getting babies because you have predator fish. Now this is an easy one to fix. All you need to do is add more cover. If you get yourself a large clump of java moss, if you grow yourself lots of live plants all packed together, if you get yourself a decent pile of rocks somewhere the babies can hide, you'll find your red cherry shrimp population will increase significantly and should increase quite quickly. Baby shrimp just need to hide long enough that they're, to reduce the chance of them being eaten. The larger the shrimp is, the less likely it's going to be eaten, unless you are actually keeping it with oscars or piranhas or large predator fish. If you're keeping your red cherry shrimp with any fish at all, the more cover you provide, the more babies will survive and the larger your colony will grow. Now, before I move on to reason number three, in the next few days, I'm setting up a dedicated shrimp breeding tank and I want to go through the whole process for you guys. From setting up the tank to introducing the shrimp to what I feed them and, and how I breed them, how I filter them, what temperature I keep them at, everything. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe now and enjoy that series with me. So reason number three is your filter is eating the babies. Now I know this sounds crazy. If you run your tank with a hang on back filter or a canister filter, that filter will have an intake of some sort, an intake pipe with a strainer over the end. And those strainers, as I've said many times before, are perfect for keeping fish out, but they're absolutely hopeless at keeping shrimp out. The shrimp will naturally be, be drawn towards them because on that strainer is where bits of food get caught, bits of leaf that are breaking down. They're ideal places for shrimp to find food. The problem is, the shrimp gets sucked up the pipe. And once they're in the hangar back filter, once they're in the canister filter, the chances are the shrimps are gone. Now this too is a simple fix. Just get yourself an intake sponge, which goes over the intake to the hang on back or canister filter. It'll set you back a few dollars, a few pounds. They're not very expensive. They're literally like the sponge from a sponge filter. You pop it over the strainer and instantly the chances of a, a shrimp, a baby shrimp being sucked in the filter are, are pretty much eradicated. In fact, the additional benefit of having that sponge is well, not only does that sponge provide you additional surface area for beneficial bacteria to live on, but the sponge prevents bits of uneaten food, prevents leaves getting sucked into the filter where they ultimately just sit and rot. Any bits of detritus will typically stick to the outside of the sponge, making it much easier for you to clean and reducing how often you need to actually service your hang on back or canister filter. So if you do find yourself running a canister or hang on back filter and you're not getting any babies, the chances are putting an intake sponge over the intake will solve your problem. So reason number four is because the shrimp aren't getting sufficient food. Now, as I've said many times in the past, shrimp are great cleanup crew. They are detrivores and scavengers, and they will eat leaves that are breaking down, fish poop, dead fish, or pretty much anything they come across. And that's fine for them to survive. That's how they survive. But in this situation, we don't want them to survive. We want them to thrive. We want the colony to grow. We want the, the shrimp to be happy and healthy and colorful. And we want them to breed. Unless you are target feeding your shrimp, you're specifically getting food to them, 
you may find that's the reason they're not producing babies. Shrimp actually have voracious appetites. They will eat all day long. They spend the entire day going like this. And whilst bits of detritus, break, leaves that are breaking down, uh, biofilm, bacteria, all these things make up a great part of their diet, I think one of the absolute best things you can do for your shrimp is ensure they get enough food. Whether that's algae wafers, sinking pellets, rapashi gel food, frozen bloodworm cubes, whatever you, whatever you have access to, feed those to your shrimp. Now this can be tricky. In this tank here again, I keep red cherry shrimp with the guppies and the two have to fight for the food, they really do. I drop a cube of rapashi in and the shrimp will be on it and the guppies will be pecking at it. But I just make sure I feed sufficient food so the guppies don't consume it all and the shrimp get their fair share. So if you're not getting red cherry shrimp babies and you're not specifically feeding your shrimp, try target feeding them with a sinking food and see if that helps them improve the size of the colony. Now reason number five, your shrimp may not be producing any babies, is because there is a lack of biofilm in their tank. Now in the previous tip, I suggested you need to target feed your shrimp, and you do. But a massive part of a shrimp's diet, especially the baby shrimp, comes from eating biofilm. And biofilm is a naturally occurring layer of bacteria and algae and other micro crustaceans that form on pretty much every surface in your aquarium. What you need to do as a shrimp keeper is provide as many surfaces as possible. Now this might come in the form of, of gravel on the substrate or rocks or live aquarium plants. Everything you add to your shrimp tank not only provides the shrimp cover, but provides them a surface for biofilm to develop on. Now personally, I find Java moss is one of the best places that biofilm forms. If you keep java moss in with your red cherry shrimp, you will find they're constantly on it. Peck, 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 peck. They spend their entire day eating the biofilm that develops on the java moss. Catapa leaves or Indian almond leaves are another fantastic addition to a shrimp tank because they provide not only surfaces for biofilm to develop on, but as the leaves break down, the shrimp don't eat the leaves themselves. They eat the bacteria that is breaking down the catapa leaves. So whilst we do need to feed our red cherry shrimp, we also need to make sure they have sufficient biofilm. Now biofilm is naturally occurring. It, it naturally forms in every aquarium, given time and the correct conditions. You don't go to the shop and buy some biofilm and add it to your tank. But if you're not sure whether or not you have the right conditions for biofilm, or whether your aquarium has biofilm forming in it, why not check out this video here? Thanks for watching.